I have less than a thousand subscribers. I'm not monetized. I haven't made a single penny off of this platform. And it's changed my life. You lose a lot of yourself and a lot of your mind in living this way. I have never done anything more draining ever. What is better than that? I don't know. The thing about YouTube, as with any other platform, is you have to start from zero. So whether you're thinking about starting a channel or maybe you've started but you haven't seen that much growth yet, at some point in time you've probably asked yourself, is this or is this going to be worth it? I'm going to share with you how YouTube has changed my life without making me any money and hopefully by the end of this video you'll be inspired to either start the channel or keep going because there really is a lot to be gained. So I've been watching a lot of these videos lately on how YouTube has changed people's lives and it's smaller accounts like me, normally people who aren't really making any money off of YouTube. I'll link the one um, that inspired me to finally bite the bullet and jump in on the trend in the description box below, but I do think it's true that I've gained so much out of YouTube without even being, you know, monetized or necessarily being this giant personality that people just want to throw money at me. It definitely has not changed my life financially whatsoever, um, but it has changed my life in a, in a number of other ways that I still think are um, truly valuable. So I thought it would be fun to kind of just do a little crochet with me and talk about all the ways that I feel like YouTube has improved my life, to be honest. And the first of which would be confidence. And if you if you know me in real life, you're like, Haley, what? Uh, yes, I do f tend to be confident in public, but for whatever reason, the internet always felt like a really scary place for me. I was very hypercritical of what I put out on the internet and not in the sense of like somebody is going to you know find me and break into my house but just in the sense of I felt like I had no control over the judgment that people could place on me and so I kind of had it in my mind that I would you know make a video and put it out on YouTube and then all these people in my life would be like oh my gosh how embarrassing like you knit or you crochet or like what a grandma. I don't know where this mindset came from necessarily because I also don't really have many people in my life that would just be mean to me. But I don't know, I just felt like I would start creating content and develop all these haters. And honestly, that was probably overconfidence contributing to my lack of confidence because no one cares at all like really no one cares and I mean that in in the most positive way like no one cares enough to hate on me for making YouTube videos and also no one cares enough to even watch them like I do not have this huge massive audience to amass all these haters and I think um, I just messed this up I think kind of realizing that and getting over that initial fear of like I'm going to be I'm going to embarrass myself if I make this video I'm going to embarrass myself that was the basis of the fear once I got over that and I realized not only is it probably not going to be embarrassing but also nobody's going to see it like I think I'll survive once I crossed that path, it opened up a lot of space for me to be much more creative on the internet as a whole. Um, and I think in doing so, it kind of gave me a different level of confidence in real life, you know, because now this is also something that I'm willing to share with my family and friends. Um, which is weird. You would think that would be like the easiest group of people to share things with, but for me that was the hardest. I felt a necessity to maintain my in-person self on the internet. Does that make sense? So, yeah, basically I kind of realized that the people who 
I, you know, expect to support me and kind of like be there for me actually will. Like they will support me even if I want to be a, a internet crocheter. Like they're still going to support me. They're still going to love me. And if they are going to judge me, they're not going to say it to my face. And I think that was probably my most favorite takeaway because now I truly feel like I can just do anything I want to do, which who knows? We'll see if that ends up being a good thing or a bad thing, but it's definitely been extremely freeing to no longer be scared of this judgment that honestly never existed. It didn't really exist. And I have seen in other content creators this kind of being a common vibe where it's like it has the draw and we and we want to do it. We want to create content, whether it be on Instagram, YouTube, whatever platform. It can be really enticing, but there's just this underlying fear of like, I don't want to embarrass myself. And maybe I have embarrassed myself, but it doesn't feel like it. So, you know, like maybe I'm embarrassing myself right now. But no one's going to say it to my face. No one's going to say it to my face. No one's going to tell me that. I have been on YouTube. Ooh, actually, this is technically my second channel. So I've been on YouTube a while. But I've been, like, confidently on YouTube. Like, I am on YouTube for about a year now. A little less than a year. And not one person has said, you're so embarrassing. Get off the internet to my face. Not one. And to kind of expand on that, there is a minimum level of vulnerability that's required for like any type of content you want to put out on the internet. And I'm not talking about like spilling your deepest, darkest secret, which you are, you're welcome to do if that's what you want to do. But even for me, I had to be like, okay, I'm going to sit down and record myself talking to a camera about yarn and then I'm going to put it on the internet, and no one's going to watch it, no one's going to like it, and then I'm going to do it again, and again, and again. And once I kind of accepted that, not only was I able to have the confidence gain that I mentioned before, but I also found my niche. And this is, actually this may be the biggest takeaway, or maybe they're tied for first, or maybe they're all equal, but in finding my niche, I kind of gained this space where I could be and not my true self because I feel like we all have many true selves, but the crafty, like creative side of me actually had a place to live out in the open now because I've been doing crafts and yarny things all my life, like literally since I was like 11 or something. So it's definitely a unseparable part of me, but it didn't have a place to go. And I didn't have any friends that knit or crocheted. I didn't have any like-minded humans in my life to really express that part of myself with. So finding this niche, I found Tiffany Liu, I believe is how you pronounce her name of Typical Bliss. She's a much bigger YouTuber in like that knitting crocheting space. I'll link her channel in the description box below. But I came across her page. I think I had like looked up a bunch of tutorials. I was trying to figure something out and in doing so the algorithm started uh, putting podcasts on my homepage. So I found her podcast and I realized that people were like talking about knitting on YouTube and my whole life was changed. Like literally my whole life was changed. Now I'm here talking about knitting on YouTube. So once I realized that there was a space for this part of me to live, it was just, I don't even know if it's freeing or liberating or just exciting. I think the basis of it was that it was just so exciting that I could post my projects and my crafts and there was going to be other people to say that's cool or not even that's cool but also like I can say I can't figure this out I'm so stuck I need help and then people come with answers 
try this, do that, look here, shop there. Or, hey, I just thought this might inspire you. I'm sending it your way. And there's so much human interaction gained from the internet, like literally out of thin air. It just comes. And I think that's brought a whole new lane for like happiness and joy and just being able to create and ha not have it fall, not on deaf ears, but you know, it just feels like it's serving more of a purpose than me spending three years making a blanket and then I just use it and it's just a blanket. Does that make sense? Maybe you have to be um, in kind of the fiber art space to truly, truly understand that. But I still think the same could go for any niche. I feel like a lot of us have hobbies, whether it be, you know, ceramics, pottery, woodworking, day trading, whatever it is, we all have those things that we like to do or we love to do. And nobody in our physical space loves that same thing. So it kind of begins to feel like, you know, this thing that you're just doing on an island by yourself. So if that's you and you have that one thing, I definitely think that pursuing that on YouTube is something to consider because whether or not you blow up, whether or not you start making money off of that one thing, you could gain a lot of friends. And friends are valuable. Friends are definitely an extremely valuable part of life. Um, they help you think, they challenge you to grow, and, you know, they support you when you're down. So I definitely think that that's huge and definitely a strong motivating factor for getting through those little days where you're posting videos and four people are watching, but those four people are watching every time and they're messaging you and they're commenting and you're building community essentially. So another life-changing thing that YouTube has given me, and I mean truly life-changing, is breathing room. And first, I'm the last person that you should be taking parenting advice from. I barely know what I'm doing myself, so that's, that's not the direction this is going in. Also, I don't, this is not me asking for parenting advice either. This is neither of those two things. But I am a stay-at-home mom, so I have no higher responsibility, really, than taking care of my kids. And this is not to say that if you work, your kids are not your highest responsibility. I don't mean it in that sense at all. Okay, no fighting. No fighting. But, like... I have nothing to report to beyond my children that are a toddler and a baby, okay? Only one of my two kids even speaks. So from the moment I wake up to the moment I can get them to go to sleep, my number one is my kids. And... You lose a lot of yourself and a lot of your mind in living this way. And maybe you don't. That's not to say that every single stay-at-home mom has a hard time. Um, if you're considering being a stay-at-home mom, consider it. But for me, in my own personal experience, I have never done anything more draining ever. I have never gotten to a point where I just barely even knew who I was before being a stay-at-home mom. So having this space on YouTube where I can step outside of that and be me and share things that I like to do and I want to do and share them with other people who like to do the same things and want to do the same things and we can do things that are not childcare has been monumental because
kids are a lot. They're, they're a lot. And being on YouTube where I can like talk about my silly little projects and get inspiration from other creators and just have a space where like nothing really matters. Nothing is life or death. Nothing is like nothing is do or die. Nothing on YouTube is do or die. That's so, you know, like that's the best way I can describe it. Like I'm going to sit down, I'm going to make this video about yarn and everything is going to be okay. You know, I think having that is just the best thing in the world. It's the best thing ever. I, I truly love it to the point where who really cares who watches it or who likes it or who hates it because I got to do something for me today and no one else and no one else. I got to do something for me and whether or not your responsibilities are children or their bills or their, you know, whatever it may be. If you find yourself coming to YouTube for a sense of relief from all of those responsibilities and you feel enticed to maybe join in on the creation side of things, I think you should absolutely definitely do it because you will be so surprised by just the amount of breathing room that it can give you to have something less, I don't know, like something less urgent. Like it's on your time, it's on your schedule, you can commit to it as much as you want to commit to it. Maybe you don't even want to eventually get monetized or maybe you don't ever want it to be a source of income, you know, like maybe you just truly love to do it. I definitely say dive in, just go ahead and start because like that, that's literally what it feels like. Like I'm going to make this video and no one's going to cry and no one's going to need to eat something and no one's going to ask me for anything because this is just the internet and we're just having a fun little time. This is just a silly little get together, you and me, and everything is going to move and continue to flow the way it flows and we're going to get a break and we're going to get some check-in time how's it going what's up with you here's what's up with me <sighs> what is better than that i don't know i'm barely making any progress but that's okay so if you are like me and Part of your reason for starting YouTube was in the hopes of eventually being monetized and creating some sort of, some sort of some sort of income stream. Another way that YouTube has changed my life is it's given me something to strive for again. So like I said, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Obviously, there's goals within that you know you need your child to roll over and then crawl and then talk now we're trying to m make my son read so yeah there's things to strive for that are so out of your control they're so out of your control like I can show him letters I can read him words I can do all those things but in my experience the day it clicks for my children is the day they want it to click and no one else's no one else's because I'm telling you I can write out my son's name 50 times on Monday he knows what those letters spell on Tuesday he doesn't why he doesn't want to so those goals were just so stressful they were and they are so stressful whereas YouTube it's given me a space to set goals that I can have so much more control over. So, you know, I want to make four videos a week or a month. <laughs> a month. No one's making four videos a week. I want to make four videos a month or I want to reach 500 subscribers. I want to gain 30 watch hours. You know, it's things that, although I still don't have final say in whether or not I achieve them, they're things that I can do on my own, you know? I can record these videos, I can post them, or I cannot. 
and whether or not I recorded those four videos is roughly based on my own effort and, you know, what I put into it. So having something that was more in my control and not only in my control, but the success kind of comes back to me because again, I can teach my son to read and he can read, but it's really to his own benefit. I can already read. You know what I mean? So it's like, yes, that that is good for him. But at the same time, achieving that goal, all it really gives me is like, okay, now he can read. I need to teach him math. You know, and, and he just takes those skills and he reads. But I'm not truly gaining that much from it other than the ability to say, like, my son can read. So on YouTube, I now have, like, oh, I want to try to get like this year I want to try to get monetized so you know am I going to do it am I not I don't know but I'm in control of that like am I going to put out enough content am I going to make engaging videos so people want to subscribe am I going to you know put time and effort into my edits so people want to continue watching to build my watch hours that's more in my control and prior to YouTube I didn't really have goals that I could set that I wanted to set like oh I'm gonna clean the house like that's not that fun that's not that fun I don't care I don't care that's not fun like oh I'm gonna have all the full the clothes folded and put away on the same day like yippee yahoo I, I really I don't want to do that I don't want to do that I'm sorry so having this space where I could set goals that excited me, enticed me, you know, that I wanted to work for, it kind of plays into that breathing room of like having something for me in my control aside from being a wife and a mom. And let me tell you, the goal side of things, the breathing room is good. It's definitely good, and I think it sets the foundation for the goal side of things, but the goal side of things has had the most drastic impact on like my mental health and just my headspace as a whole because when you have nothing fun to look forward to it's dark like it's dreary it's cloudy outside so having like goals that I was excited for goals that I was achieving like things that I could plan around and like trial and error and is it gonna work is it not gonna work just brought so much life to live back into my life, you know? Like, I don't know how to explain it, but it just gives you something to do. It's like I went from I'm going to wake up and do the exact same thing that I do every single day, and I may not know, like, when exactly someone's going to start crying or what today's meltdown is going to be over or, you know, how many apples I need to slice. But roughly I'm going to do the exact same thing that I've done every single day this entire year. You know what I mean? I went from that, which is kind of blah, to, okay, this month I'm going to set these goals. I'm going to do these things. Next month I'm going to try to do these things. And it just gave variety variety like my life had very little variety prior to youtube and the variety is delicious i love it because i have all these new ways to just kind of try to create more excitement like i don't know maybe next month i want to try to make 15 shorts you know and they're simple and again nothing's life life or death Nothing really matters all that much. This is not making me any money. If I don't do it, like, nothing's going to fall apart. But at the same time, I can do it. You know, you get that? Yes? So I'm going to wrap things up and leave, leave y'all there. This is the progress on how far I got in my granny square during this video. Not far at all, but that's okay. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope that I've inspired you to either dive in or keep going forward and opened your perspective on ways that you can still gain value from YouTube without it necessarily being dollars and cents. 
So again, thank you for watching and I will catch you in this video where I talk about all of the current projects and whips that I have going on in my yarn life. Alright, bye!